Outside of Australia, Japan is my favourite country on earth. And uh, I've been there gee, five or six times at least since in the last 20, 25 years. Um, one of the great things you notice about Japan is, first of all, how safe it is. I mean, the police are so bored in Japan that they essentially, um, their main job is to kind of like look after drunk people because uh, the Japanese like to drink. So on Friday and Saturday night, because they work so hard, they get a bit toasted and the police, you know, are very, very nice about how they look after people. And actually, I got a quite a funny story. Oh, I don't know if I should go into that, but like um, one time uh, my girlfriend who I was with um, forgot to take any money with her. And she um, we, we got separated somewhere and she caught a cab back to our hotel and she couldn't pay. So the police had to come and arrest her because she didn't pay for her cab. And I had to go to the hotel room and there was a note to go visit the local station. And there was about 10 or 15 police sitting around laughing at my girlfriend because I went and paid what was like $20. They weren't heavy. They, were, they found the whole incident amusing, you know, because there was nothing to do on a, like a Friday or Saturday night. This was the major crime. Some white girl forgetting to pay for a cab, you know, which they didn't even consider a crime. I mean, they were not being heavy. They were just like, ha ha ha, silly, I don't know what their, their, their terminology is for a silly white girl, but I think they've got one. And, um, you know, they were just kind of mo mocking the incident. It was kind of funny, but not only is it safe, um, it's a very unified society. Everything is just beautiful. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, the. I mean, these are, these are Tokyo has a population, but broader Tokyo has a population of almost Australia, something like 20 million people. So think about that. Think about if all of the population of Australia lived in it's like some outer Sydney area and it's clean. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like there's not that much litter. I mean, everything's well organized. The, the trains, it's like Mussolini has taken over the, the train system. They all run on time, mate. You know, and, and it's just it's just a very well organized, well disciplined society. They have their religions that they are interested in. Um, uh, Shinto is the local religion, which is uh, kind of like a, a, a worship of nature. And there are lots of beautiful parks where you can go wandering. And so you don't have to believe in a religion to appreciate this. There are lots of these kind of um, beautiful kind of like um, orange arches and you go and wander in the parks. I mean, this is a really unified society and the culture is unique to Japan. They have a wonderful history. Of course, you know, I mean, they have a bit of a negative side to their history. Um, obviously, we fought them in, in World War II and my grandfather was a pilot in the RAAF. And if you heard me uh, praising the Japanese so much, I'm sure he'd be that, be that pleased. But like, um, you know, he fought the, the Japanese and he was never a fan of them because a couple of his friends had been, a uh, couple they had killed and another couple uh, had been tortured in camps by them. So obviously they have a dark side, but as far as um, their own exploits um, in World War II are viewed from, from the Japanese perspective, they view their exploits as liberation. You know, they see their, essentially see their wartime activity as heroic. Unlike Germany, who see, who just endlessly apologise, endlessly kind of like, oh, we're so sorry, or whatever. The Japanese are proud of their war, and they don't give a fuck what we think in the West. I mean, of course, when when they have the odd, you know, like you know, like meeting of like G20 or whatever, or whenever there's a meeting of international states, they all kind of, oh yeah, we're a bit sorry for some of the things we did. I oh, know they're not, they're not sorry at all. Let me tell you, they don't give a fuck. They see things from their own nationalist perspective, and they're very, very proud of what they did. <laughs> Trust me, I've spoken to a lot of them of what they did in World War Two. And to be honest, so are the fucking Germans. You know what I mean? The, even the fact that the Germans have to bow and and. Um, What's it called? Like toady. Oh, we're so sorry. No, no. You, you get a German drunk, you know, and get them honest. Believe me, they're not fucking sorry at all. You know what I mean? Like it's all just under the surface. Remember, civilization is this thick. All you got to do is rub the surface. And that's what's going on right now. We're rubbing the surface. And that's why this nationalism is coming back stronger, stronger, fast as a train, bullet, bulleting down a hill. One of the things you, you do pick up is sometimes you'll see an older Japanese person who clearly was around during World War II at least in, in the 90s, in the last decade I was there, they would maybe be 80 or 90. So, I mean, they would have been some, they, were, they would have been alive during World War II. And they would give you very, very dirty looks. <laughs> you know what I mean? They would look at you like you were, I mean, you would get the sense that you are the foreigner and you are the piece of shit or whatever. You know what I mean? And I would never blame them for doing that. I would think you're probably right. I mean, you know, because we bombed the living shit out of um, large parts of Japan. And God knows if these people did not lose parents or you know, sisters or, you know, God knows what. So, I mean, the Western person to, to the average older Japanese person um, could have a bad um, uh, ramification due to the suffering we caused Japan during World War II. And I think, you know, I think that's fair enough. The same as, you know, my grandfather um, bore some animus towards the Japanese. And, um, you know, and if he was alive today, still would, I imagine. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that, you know, I mean, you just got to look at the electoral system of Japan. They have voted right wing um, nationalist for years. I mean, to the point where there's, there's, there's just no, you know, 
the opposition, even though there is a left opposition, I, I don't think it, it maybe won an election 40 years ago for like a couple of years or something. But like it's almost since World War Two, it's just almost voted nationalist right universally to the point where it's almost in, pointless to, to, to attempt any other kind of politics. Obviously, there are different variations of that politics which turn up and there are ones that are more capitalist um, based and there are ones that are more nationalist. Uh, but recently um, they held an election, I think a year or two ago, and it was just strong, strong nationalist based all the way. So, you know, I'm a huge fan of Japan. If anybody is on the new right, alt right or whatever, I highly recommend you go to Japan because this is one of the greatest countries on earth. And uh, it just goes to show that um, a monoculture can be a, a tremendous success and that all this crap about um, uh, uh, it's got to be multicultural, it's got to be diverse for it to be wonderful. No, 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 that's absolute nonsense. And the very fact that the, the population is, um, the Japanese have begun to um, breed less. Of course, that's the capitalist coming and so, oh, you'll need more people. But why do we always have to have a society based around greed? You know, why is that the one idea that our society all must be the gr endless growth? You know what that is? I'll tell you right now, that's evolution. Because when uh, we're just entering a new stage of evolution, it used to be that, you know, Increasing in population was part of evolution, right? But no, no, once you reach a certain level of technological superiority, you don't need as many people because machines begin to take over. So what you're seeing is in the declining birth rate, you're seeing evolution taking a new step. You're entering a new age you know, of, of human evolution. It's not happening in the third world because they haven't reached our stage of technological evolution. But this growing, um, declining birth rate you're seeing in the West and in, and in Japan is actually a sign of how evolved we are. And we need to embrace that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's okay that there's going to be less of us, you know. But we, you know, it should, this planet should only have about a billion people on it. What do we need six and a half billion people for? It's ridiculous. So I don't know. I mean, it's ridiculous. And, and you want to talk green, there is the main problem, you know, overpopulation. And it's not just... It's not just the, the um, you know, like, it's, it's mainly the third world, you know what I mean? It's just people who have nothing to better to do but fuck. And then there's, they have 12, 12 kids because, I mean, they're living the way that people did in the, midi, in the Middle Ages, you know, when that was really the only thing to do. And, you know, and this is where things like birth control and stuff can really begin to actually have a positive effect. We really, and also with machines beginning to, like, you know, take over um, a lot of, um, you know... Uh, the, the mechanisms of production, um, you know, you're going to see a definite desire for less people. And we just don't need as many. And we need um, what you call a, a better quality of people. Um, we need um, people who are smarter. I mean, you know, God, I wish so someone, I think, suggested that people of a certain IQ should only be allowed to breed. Well, I'm not going to say my exact opinion on that, but that's a very interesting idea that of a certain I, why do we need, you know, why do we need people under say uh, an IQ of 100 to be breeding all the time? I mean, you know, surely we, you know, we could be a little bit selective in our, in our choice. I mean, that, that you could be accused of being, I don't know, a bit quasi-fascist with that idea. And I guess, but this is, this is, I mean, why do you think every science fiction film is set in one of these kind of you know, dystopias? Because we're here now, baby. You know what I mean? This is where we are right now. We are at that point where evolution is changing and something new is just about to be born.